What's up guys, it's your favorite QB coach. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the differences between the driver swing and the iron swing. More specifically, we're gonna talk about some key differences in setup and hand path and club shot pitch. So let's kind of get into it. So I have Jim Park, he's hitting an eight iron here on the left of the screen, and then I have Jim Park hitting a driver here on the right of the swing, just to keep consistencies between the two players, well, the, the same player. Anyway, so let's kind of get into it. So the first thing with setup we're gonna take a look at is the knee flex at address, all right? So let's go take a look at his driver. So as we draw this angle, we're gonna start seeing that Jen's knee flex with driver is gonna be a little bit more upright than say his knee flex with iron, correct? That kind of makes sense to me. Hopefully it's starting to make sense kind of with you guys as well. If you guys have a shorter club, most likely you're gonna be bent down and crouched down a little bit more to the ground than say you had a longer club, correct? Now the second key difference is gonna be in the lower back spinal, okay? So we're gonna zoom in real quick on both of them and kind of see some differences here as well. So going on the same premise that we did with the knee flex, I'm going to say that Jin's lower back spine angle, or kind of like this lumbar spine angle, is going to be a little bit more acute over here on his iron swing on the left of the screen than it is going to be over here on the driver swing, right? Which we can see here. So notice how on the left of the screen it's 155 and then on the right of the screen it's 157, okay? So those are definitely some key differences that I like to see. Now notice how both of those angles, the lower back spine angle and the knee flex angle, are pretty relatively close to each other in both of these, right? They're within two to three degrees of variance of each other. That's something that I would really greatly recommend for a lot of you guys with your setup when you guys are checking your swings. Now, a few other key points that I wanna take note of is basically how far away is he standing from the golf ball, which each club, right? I get this question quite a bit from beginners as well as intermediates, even advanced players sometimes, because again, it can be confusing because there's definitely some misinformation about out there with this topic, right? So let's go take a look and see what Jen's doing. So as we draw a line from the middle of the hand straight down, we can see that Jin with the eight iron is basically right on his toe line, right? So I typically see players with the shorter irons, even sometimes the mid iron, sometimes anywhere from right on the toe line to even towards the balls of the feet. You have a few kind of oddities out there, like a Jim Furyk stands a lot closer. He's almost on the inside the balls of the feet, as opposed to maybe a player like Zach Johnson is almost even a little bit outside the toe line, right? So there's definitely a range inside there, but I like for a good model for a lot of you guys out there, let's just keep it with the shorter irons and mid irons pretty much on that toe line is a great place to start from now if we take a look at Jin with driver we're going to see a little bit of a difference here notice how he's right around like an inch to two inches outside the toe line so again a longer club means you're probably not going to stand as close to it okay so again when you guys have that question how far away do i stand from it this is a great general guideline to follow. You don't have to be in these realms, but I would say if you're just starting out, great place to start. Now the last little indicator with his setup that we're gonna take a look at is basically his pressure points, I like to call them. And this is gonna be one of the few things that is similar between the two. And let's kind of take a look. So if we draw some circles on both of these, we can see that the balls of the feet, kneecaps, and armpits are all in a line, okay? This is super important when you guys are setting up with your clubs. If you can have these pressure points all in a line that means that at setup the distribution between your toes and heels are right around 50 50 that's a great place for you guys to start and you guys are going to be very much balanced at setup and it, it takes away a lot of the compensation you guys are going to have to do later in the golf swing so now what we're going to take a look at is the differences between hand path and club shot pitch with both of them okay so let's take Jin up too with the eight iron to the top of the swing we're going to take him with the driver as well so we're going to stop it at this position i call p5 which is basically when the left arm is parallel to the ground. So as we take Jin back down there and then we're gonna take him with the driver as well, we're gonna see a subtle difference between the hand paths, okay? So let's take a look. So if I draw a circle on both of these hands positionings and then let's draw an arrow straight down towards the ground, we're gonna see that Jin Park's hand positioning with different clubs is slightly different, right? So with driver, you're gonna wanna see hands dropping a little bit more behind you than say with irons, they're gonna be a little bit more out in front of you, okay? Now the reason because of this is it gets into kind of ball flight laws in this d-plane theory which basically means the more you hit down on the ball i.e an iron right so if you're hitting an iron you want to hit down on the ground you want to make sure you're contacting golf ball and then ground that's kind of the idea so the more you hit down on it the more it shifts the path or where your club head's going to swing more out to the right so if you don't want to have a path that's way out to the right, what you're going to have to do with irons is exit a little bit more left. And that's why we want the hands going a little bit more out in front of us. Now in driver, because we're hitting on the up, 
what we're actually doing is shifting where that club head is swinging more to the left. So the same basis kind of goes, right? Whenever we're shifting it more to the left because we're hitting up on it, I'd rather see hands fall a little bit more behind us so we can kind of get swing direction a little bit more out to the right to cancel those two out. And next thing you know, you're gonna be able to optimize your numbers. Cool. Now the last thing I want to look for in this position is going to be club shaft pitch because there's a little bit of differences between these two as well. So club shaft pitch is just basically where the butt in the club is orientated throughout the whole swing. Wherever that butt in is pointing is kind of club shaft pitch, right? So it's constantly bearing throughout the whole golf swing. But let's take a look at where it is in this particular position. So if we draw a line from the butt end of Jin's club on the 8 iron, we're going to see that this butt in is pointing right around 2 to 3 inches outside the ball line, right? So let me draw, let me go back for both of these players and draw the ball line real quick. So we call this the um, the ball target line. You can call it the ball line. It's basically where this club face is pointing at setup is gonna be the ball line, right? So let's get it as close as we possibly can. And then we're gonna get Jen's as close as we possibly can as well. Let me redo that real quick. So then we're gonna take Jen back up to the P5 position. We'll take Jen Park with the driver as well. Now, once we draw the club shaft pitch with driver, there's definitely some differences here. Look at with the driver, that that line is pointing inside the ball target line. Now with irons, it's pointing more outside. This is a very, very important concept that I don't think a lot of you guys are getting. So the more the hands are behind you, the less of this shallowing motion, laying down the shaft, whatever you wanna call it, the more horizontal of the club shaft pitch is also something you can call as well, the less you want of it. The more the hands are out in front of you, the more it's okay to lay down that shaft. That's a really, really important concept that I don't think a lot of you guys are getting out there. There's not a lot of golf instructions that's quite getting that as well. It's a great way to quote unquote match up your golf swing is making sure that wherever your hand path is that your club shaft pitch, which again is where that button is pointing throughout the golf swing is matching that. Okay. So Jin does a great job of this. And this is why one of the main reasons why he's my model for the down the line view. Cool. So again, just remember when hand path is more behind you, we don't want to have it as laid down as when hand path is more out in front of us. Cool, so that's the last um, thing we're gonna look for at the P5 position. The last little difference I wanna take a note of is basically just exit patterns, okay? So again, let's draw these lines real quick. So this is the ball target line again that we're drawing. Now let's just take a look at exit pattern with the iron. So as he comes in, he's coming in slightly from the left quadrant and then we're gonna see him immediately exit off that line. Now with driver, we're coming a little bit more from the inside quadrant, but the next frame, he's actually, he's exiting off it, just not as much of a degree as he would with the irons, right? So let's take a look. So at this P8 position, or when basically on the follow through when the hands are right around level with the hips, let's take a note of where his club or his hand path is relative to the club head. And then we'll do the same thing with the driver, right? So what we can see with exit pattern is that his, which irons, the shorter irons especially, hands are exiting more left, club head is still out, it's still pretty close to his body as well, right? Everything is more left. Driver, we can see that hand path is still exiting left, but just not as much, and that the club head is not exiting as much as well, right? So this is super important for you guys to get. Entry and exit points is a huge concept that we're gonna talk about in some other videos coming up soon, but I really just wanted to lay down the base knowledge of it, okay? So just realize with driver and irons, your entry and exit patterns are gonna be different. The reason why they're different is because of the whole D plane theory, which we explained a little bit earlier in this video. Cool guys, so that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. I kept it hopefully pretty simple for you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Make sure to smash that like button. We love the support. Getting more people to watch these videos and just getting a little bit more reach, so that greatly helps with that. Last thing, if you guys haven't subscribed already, feel free, please, 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 to hit that nice little red subscribe button. All right guys, hopefully this helps. Best of luck and play some golf out there.